In the previous video, we looked at how controls and movement make a game feel good, but now we're going to focus more on the presentation side of things. After all, without the jump sound effects in Mario games, they would feel odd and less satisfying. The core gameplay, as tightly polished and perfect as it may be, can only go so far in making a game feel good. Sometimes you need to dress things up with an illusion or two. This is a segment from the beginning of Dark Void, where you attack some flying saucers. Something feels quite off about this, doesn't it? This gun just doesn't feel powerful enough to do damage to these saucers, yet they crumble after a few hits like plastic cups. Now let's edit the audio and see what impact it has on the gameplay. Even though the properties of the gun haven't been changed at all, the sound makes it feel more powerful. Sometimes it really is that simple. I, w I was talking to uh, Manfir here, he's super cool, and he told me that one time while I was working on some first person shooter, they had a gun and it wasn't very popular, and the investors were like, oh man, that gun sucks, you should go and fix it, like it, the gameplay is bad. And he went to his computer, he opened Audacity or something, opened the gunshot sound effect and clicked like bass boost, 12 decibels, and put it back in the game, and he's like, all right, I fixed the gameplay, handed the computer to the investors, and they were like, Oh yeah, that feels good. And this has become such a common tactic that it's often used as a gameplay device. In Mass Effect 2, using the adrenaline rush power makes you more powerful for a short period of time. While you can clearly see by the enemy's health bar that you're dealing more damage, the change in audio also helps to sell the action, making you feel more powerful at the same time. Other sound tricks can make you feel accomplished as well as powerful. Watch this footage. Which of the following sounds better? This? Or this? The latter one, right? The ascending scale helps to sell the combo, and furthermore makes you want to accomplish one whenever possible. When working on game feel, specifically making the player feel powerful, it's important not to worry too much about realism. For example, it's often instinctual to make bullets a realistic size, but this doesn't read very well in video games. You should be making them big, like the size of your head big, or at least give us a muzzle flash or something to make the weapon more impressive. If you're making an action game that's supposed to make the player feel powerful, then why not? Another trick that is very effective is to use screen shake, which, as it sounds, shakes the screen. This is something that Jan Willem explains so well in his presentation on the subject, and uses in all of his games. Though it doesn't just have to be used in action games. In Hearthstone, when you manage to score a high amount of damage, then the screen will shake and the audience will react accordingly. Even though you're just playing with a bunch of cards, landing a good hit just feels good. He also mentions another trick, the kickback, where firing your guns knocks your character back a few pixels, which along with making your gun feel more powerful, can make an impact on the gameplay as well. Like in Devil May Cry 3, where firing your guns in the air slows Dante's descent, which not only looks cool, but changes the way you play the game. Flambier games are all about making the player feel good. You'll notice in Luft Trousers that whenever you take damage or damage other planes, the screen will freeze for a moment, making the hits much more impactful. Something else that helps? Explosions. And lots of them. In some games, enemies are the only things that you can interact with, so you may as well make the interactions as meaningful as possible. If you're not dealing with machines, then improvise and get creative. If explosions and gore don't fit the tone, then try something else like in Red Dead Revolver, where killing an enemy results in the screen briefly blurring. Or in Dark Souls, where delivering the final blow results in a slightly different sound effect than usual. The most common example though, is to simply have the enemy flash a different colour for a moment, to at least let the player know that they are doing some form of damage. This notion of having enemies react to the player goes a long way to helping the player have physical presence within the game. We touched on this last time when talking about momentum, which gives the player weight, making them feel more present and real. But this can be accomplished with visuals as well. In Hotline Miami, dead bodies will remain where you left them, even if you leave the area, meaning that at the end of each mission, whilst walking back to your car, you have to walk across the bodies of every single person you've killed. Which not only reminds you of the impact you have made on the space, but also helps to set the tone. If that's too gruesome for you, then look at a game like Grow Home that does something similar. 
You can look back periodically as you play and see all the progress that you personally have been making and the impact it is having upon the world. Though we can go back to Wanton Carnage for just a second. Some games will put objects in the background for the sole purpose of being destroyed. There may be some hidden collectibles you can find, but even if they served no other purpose, you would probably still find yourself whacking away at these items simply for the fun of it. Even if it feels or looks silly, players will relish any opportunity to interact with the game's world. Remember when people felt that the ragdoll physics in Demon Souls and Dark Souls were silly? Then remember how disappointed people were when I was excluded from Dark Souls 2? First person games can sometimes have trouble with presence, seeing as though you don't actually get to see the main character unless they take the time to code in some legs. For all its faults, this is something that the new Thief game is actually excellent at. It feels good to go into people's homes and steal their belongings. It actually makes you feel like you are making an impact on the world in a real, physical way. A lot of these may seem like simple tricks, but putting them all into play effectively, it is possible to make you feel good even when the game's controls are lacking. Those who have played Def Jam Icon will know what I'm talking about here. The game isn't particularly very good, but it feels good to play. The environment contorts and shakes, explosions look cool, and the sound changes to sell the actions. It would be nice if the overall game was better, but they at least nailed the presentation. Ultimately, you can make a game control as well as you want, but it helps to add a little spice and soul. Or as Jan Willem says, Like, just fill your games with love and tiny details. This, like, this is what, what, what video games should be like. They should have meaning and triple machine guns. There is of course a lot more that goes into what makes a game feel good, as I haven't even touched on the effective use of colours, the math involved in movement, and of course, level design, but I think that'll do for now. If you're interested in learning more, I've linked all the videos, essays, articles and books I used in making these videos in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.